Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we have uh, an interesting workshop for you today, hopefully helpful, about uh, Medicare that uh, <coughs> Justin and Roderick, Rod, are going to do for us. But first, uh, you know, I, wanted to, I wanted to start with a joke. And, uh, you know, the markets right now are so uh, scary for people. I wanted to start with a joke to kind of break the ice. And I've been looking on the internet for jokes. and. All the jokes are about financial advisors stealing your money, so I didn't want to bring any of those jokes. And then, and then Mary Kay said, well, why don't you tell an insurance joke, because we've got these guys. And I think the insurance jokes are even worse. It's about the insurance companies not wanting to pay their, pay, pay their uh, claims. So we're not going to do that, but we're just, I'm just going to say, so, you know, during our working lives, we, we work hard to, and we're making money during our work lives. And then, then, and we kind of help you through that process. And then it comes to retirement. We help through that process. And, th and then it's money working for you uh, instead of you working for money. However, the, so that means money working, the only way money works is if it's basically put to work and that involves uh, essentially the ups and downs that you have to live through in the market, which is, I know is very difficult, but uh, that's the nature of uh, money working for you and, and our process is about making it easier for you to navigate all those complications now i know how to do that when it came to medicare i was like this is so befuddling and complicated to me what do i do and that's when uh, roderick called us or reached out to us or somebody did and so uh, these guys are very good at making a very complicated intimidating process simple and easy to understand. So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Justin and uh, Roderick to do the presentation. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. So thanks for having us tonight. Um, this workshop we normally do for Medicare is normally about 90 minutes, so we're going to do about half of that tonight um, and squeeze in as much as we can. Um, we do have a few videos that we've created as for the second half of the presentation and other parts which you'll get a summary at the end of the, uh, the presentation, so you'll have links to those videos and other areas that we just don't have time to get into. You just can't get through all of Medicare and Somebody in raised their minutes. hand. Oh, you have a question? Ready? Is it an audio thing? I think it's a mistake. Mistake. Okay. Um, but uh, just to give you some very brief background on senior advisors, uh, we're a Medicare general agency. Uh, we're family-owned and operated. It's my father's uh, business. Uh, he's been in the insurance industry uh, over 30 years. So we started out in small group benefits, and, and as people were aging out of the groups, we never really had a solution for Medicare. So we would tell the people, just call Blue Cross Blue Shield or call AARP, and they'll help you with your Medicare plans. And one of his close friends got him educated on Medicare about 15 years ago. Uh, he started Senior Advisors, and it's actually become one of the largest general agencies in the Northeast for Medicare plans. Uh, we have over 25,000 clients. Um, mostly in the Northeast, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, our top three states, but we're licensed in over 30 states uh, across the country, okay? Um, very active with um, Washington, D.C., so I'm the vice chair of the Medicare Advisory Group for the National Association of Health Underwriters. So we go to Washington every year, we lobby on behalf of Medicare beneficiaries to help protect and improve the Medicare system. I met with the House Ways and Means Committee uh, multiple years um, to discuss some key issues and other uh, representatives down in Washington, D.C. as well uh, on some key Medicare, Medicare issues. So, um, and this is just some of that background. Oh, you have all this, <coughs> did, you, did I get the oh, pointer? Oh, can we hand it down? Oh, no, yeah. this is yeah, I'll um, so uh, all these slides are gonna be in the, in the folder, so you can follow along. Um, we have the two offices, so my father down in South Jersey, and then I'm in Cranford, and we also have an office out in Arizona. Um, these are all the states we're currently licensed in. We're con con continually adding new states as well as we get referrals in other areas. And essentially, we're, we're basically a broker, so there's no fee to work with us. Um, we help people enroll with any of the A-rated insurance companies, and they pay the same premium whether they go directly to the insurance company or if they work through a broker. So there's really no fee to work with us, right? So that's just the framework, the background on who we are. The presentation itself is broken into three sections. Um, the first section is kind of the Medicare 101, the different parts of Medicare, um, how much you pay the government for the Medicare, the Part B premiums. If you're in a higher income bracket, how much do you have to pay the, the government for those Part B premiums? Um, when you should be signing up for Medicare, how you sign up for Medicare, 
Uh, that's all under that section one. We also cover the difference between Medicare supplements and Medicare Advantage plans. Those are two very different types of coverage. Uh, most of those commercials you're seeing, Joe Namath, William Shatner, you know, Jimmy Walker, right, every other 30 minutes on the TV, um, those are mostly Medicare Advantage plans that they're talking about, right? So it's a very different type of coverage than Medicare with a supplement. So we're going to get into that. Rod's going to talk about the differences there in Section 1. Uh, section 2 um, is prescription drug plans. And depending on our time, this is where we're going to have to cut some time because it just, it's just too much to get in. Um, but we're going to do a little bit on the Part D uh, prescription drug plans. We normally do a live demo of how we pick the, the most cost-effective drug plan uh, based upon a specific list of medications. Uh, but we have videos on how to do that, so that's what you'll get a video link for afterwards. We also have some updates um, from that bill that was passed about a month ago. Um, there's a lot of changes coming with prescription drug pricing, uh, so we're going to talk about that in Section 2. And then at the end of the presentation, we recap the top five mistakes people make on Medicare. So these are kind of touched on in Sections 1 and 2. And then at the end, we just recap those mistakes, so hopefully you can avoid those mistakes. Right? And feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, you don't want to just hear me lecture uh, the whole time, so feel free to uh, ask your questions as they come up. Jeff, yes? We do have a question. We do have a question. OK. We ask everyone to allow uh, Greg to speak and ask his question. OK. Yes, Greg? Is it volume? Is it volume? Yeah, it's up. Greg? No? Maybe he could type his question. You could, you could ask his that. Will be, is that all right? If you can hear us, you can type your question in the Q&A window in the Zoom, and then we'll, we'll, add, we'll repeat the question here. All right? Um, so these are the different parts of Medicare, just very high level. The part A of Medicare covers what? Hospital, right? So if you're if you're in the hospital part, the answers are there. You got it. The answer is <laughs> you're, you're still here. You're still here. You're paying attention. All right. Um, it, so if you're an inpatient, the hospital part A is going to cover that. If you get transferred from the hospital into a skilled nursing facility, that's also under Part A of Medicare. All right. That is not long-term care or assisted living, right? Skilled nursing is like a rehab, right? You've had a knee replacement. Uh, and you're in the hospital for a few days, and you get transferred from the hospital into the rehab facility. That's under Part A of Medicare. You have a stroke and you're in the hospital for a few days, you go into rehab, that's covered under that Part A umbrella. Part B of Medicare. And there's a cap on that, correct? Yes, there is. There is a cap. We're going to get in. Oh. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so Medicare Part A will cover fully 20 days under skilled nursing. And then after that, there's a copay, daily copay of it's $200 this year or next year, $200 per day for the next 80 days. If you have a Medicare supplement, which we're going to talk about, it pays that daily copay. Um, part B of Medicare is basically everything outside of the hospital. So that's going to be your doctors, your specialists, testing, x-rays, CAT scans, uh, expensive things like chemotherapy, kidney dialysis, infusion therapies. That's all under Part B of, of Medicare. All right, Part C of Medicare, and this is a bit of a misnomer. It's not really a part of Medicare, but it's another way for you to take your Medicare benefits, and it's also known as a Medicare Advantage plan. Right? So that's the fully privatized plan where the insurance company takes over and fully manages your benefits for you. So if you sign up for a Part C Medicare Advantage plan, um, you're no longer on Medicare, right? So now you're fully administered by United Healthcare, Aetna, Blue Cross, whatever insurance company you sign up for is now taking over your Medicare benefits for you. Okay, that's what a Medicare Advantage, AKA Part C plan is, right? Part D is the prescription drug coverage. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about that. There's about 25 different Part D plans available in each state to choose from. And again, the tool we recommend, it's right on the Medicare website. It's called the Medicare Plan Finder. It basically allows you to put in all the drug information, and it, it does all the analysis for you and gives you the total numbers for each of those plans and sorts the list for you. Um, it's a really powerful tool. Um, at the bottom of this slide shows you the premiums, right? What do you pay monthly for each part of Medicare? So for Part A... Most people pay zero, right? You've paid into the system your whole life. As long as you've worked 40 quarters, it's essentially 10 years, and contributed to Medicare and Social Security, there's no additional premium for Part A. Right? If you don't meet that criteria, it's actually very expensive. It's about $500 a month uh, for that Part A premium. But that's an exception, right? Most people have that requirement through them or, or spouse. Part B of Medicare, uh, most people are paying the base premium. 
Uh, about 93% of Medicare beneficiaries pay the base amount, which went down for next year. Um, this year it's about $170 a month. Next year it's going down to $164.90 per month for that base um, premium. On the next slide, I'm going to show you the income adjustments if you're in a higher income bracket. The premiums for Part C, if you sign up for one of those Medicare Advantage plans, uh, they're going to vary depending on the plan you sign up for. We don't get into specific Medicare Advantage plans, but just know they vary from $0 a month up to you know, $200 a month. Uh, most people that are signing up for a Medicare Advantage plan are signing up for a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. They still have to pay the Part B premiums, but um, there would be no additional premium on that Advantage plan. And then the drug premiums, these are also going to vary depending on the, the drug plan you enroll in. Uh, this year, the lowest premium is about $7 a month, and the highest one goes up to a little over $100 a month in premium. All right. So I mentioned there's income adjustments. And on this chart, we're actually going to focus on the right side. We just got the, the new numbers for 2023 that came out last week. Um, and these are the numbers for the Part B premiums. And those income adjustments are also called IRMAs income related monthly adjustment amounts all right and these they start at if you're below 97,000 next year the pointer is not going to 97,000 as a single and 194,000 as a joint filer you're going to pay that base premium the 164.90 all right if you're in a higher income bracket you're going to pay more to the government for the part b and the irmas you can see that goes all the way up over $500 a month if you're fortunate enough to be in one of the top uh, income brackets right so this is for Part B as in boy. There's the premium plus the IRMA you have to pay for those income brackets. Now there's also an IRMA on Part D as in drugs. So notice it's the same income tiers, but you're going to pay, if you're in the base income, you're, still, you're not paying any additional IRMA for, the, for B or D. But if you're in one of these higher income brackets, you're paying the premium for your drug plan, which again could be $7, it could be $100, whatever the... The premium is you pay that to the insurance company, and then you got to pay the government an IRMA of twelve dollars a month, or thirty-one, or fifty, or whatever, based upon your income bracket. All right. So we just added these up together for you, so you could see if you happen to be in one of those higher, if you're in the base amount, you're just paying the base one sixty-four ninety. But if you're in one of these higher income brackets, these are the total amounts per month that you'd have to pay just to the government. This doesn't include a supplement or a drug plan. Yet this is just to the government to be on Medicare. All right. Now, anyone know what income is being used to determine these, these premiums? Adjusted gross income. Yep. What's that? Adjusted gross income. Very close. Adjusted gross income. Any other guesses? Modified, <laughs> modified, modified, modified adjusted gross income. Yes. Modified. modified adjusted gross income. Modified. It's, it's, and for most people, it's going to be the same. Um, but uh, it's essentially your taxable income from the last tax return that they process. So what does that mean? So. Yeah, so this year, right, so, so for people, let's say people signing up January 1st, 2023, they're retiring and they're going to just start Medicare, what, tax, what, what income is the government using to determine your 2023 premiums? 2021 or 2022? Do they have 22 yet? No. Not yet. So they have to use 21. The last tax return they process or even have right. is 21, right? So, so they're, using your, they're using your 2021 return to determine your 2023 right. premiums, right? So it's a flawed system, but it's the best they can do. Right? So they allow you to appeal these IRMAs because it's a flawed system. Most people that are signing up for Medicare are retiring. Right? They're not going to have that active income. Right? So if you're going to be in a lower income bracket than your 2021 return set, right? so for 2023 I'm going to be you know, back to the base income or the second tier, and in 2021 I was in the fifth income tier, you're going to appeal it using this form. It's called SSA 44. It's pretty straightforward. You just check off your, you have to have a life event, right? Most likely we see work reduction or work stoppage. Those are the most common life events we see. And then you put in your projected income for the following year. So you just tell them, look, I'm only going to make 75000 or 100000 whatever it is for that 2023. And they just take your word for it. And they drop you down to the correct income tier. Yes. And it works. Yes. I yeah. did it. Oh, oh hey, you're speaking from experience. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is uh, we highly recommend this. If it's a valid appeal, right, then we highly recommend this. And they just take your word for it. Now, obviously, two years later, you come back in at half a million, right? They're coming back at you for the difference, yeah. right? So, um, but if it's a valid appeal, you should certainly do it. All right. Any questions on the premiums for Part B or the IRMAs? Okay. So when do you sign up for Medicare? So... Medicare is over 50 years old, right? When they created the system, most people were retiring 
at 65 or even before 65, right? So they built this enrollment window around your 65th birthday. It's a seven month window, it's called the initial enrollment period, and it's the month of your birthday, it's three months before your birthday, and it's three months after your birthday, right? This is the seven month initial enrollment period. This is the time you have to enroll in Medicare if you do not have credible coverage from an, like an employer plan, okay? So if you're working at a large company, more than 20 employees, you don't have to sign up for Medicare during this period. But if you're not working for a large company and you're just covered on individual insurance or not covered on anything, this is the time you have to enroll in Medicare to avoid any penalties or delays. Do you have a question? So if you're a smaller employer, yeah. like, and you have group insurance, uh -huh. and you have 10 employees, mm -hmm. our employees have to sign up yep. even though they're covered under? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, if you have less than 20 employees, what's it's, we're going to get to it. It's called the Medicare Secondary Payer Rules. It's a federal rule that determines which insurance is going to pay your claims first. Okay, so if the, do you have Blue Cross or what do you have on the group? Blue Cross. Yeah. So, so basically if they have a major, if, let's say they're 66 and now they have a major claim against the, the Blue Cross insurance, Blue Cross doesn't have to pay 80% of their claim if they don't sign up for Medicare because Medicare is primary payer. If it's 20 or more employees, then you can stay on the group health plan. It has to continue to pay primary and you don't have to sign up. But for a small company, Absolutely, you have to, to sign up or you're not going to be covered really by that Blue Cross plan. Yeah. So if you're a small company and they sign up two months after your uh, 65th birthday for your um, group insurance, if you're a small group, will your group insurance pay for those two months after your 65th birthday? Um, no. 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 And here's the thing. If you have just a couple of doctor's appointments in those two months, it'll pay. What happens is if you have a $10,000, $100,000 claim, it got people looking at those things to, to, to Mark's point, right? We Insurance companies don't wanna pay claims, right? They've got, and if they could do it in a legal way, this is this is the law, it says I don't have to pay 80% of that claim, I'm not gonna pay. So, but yeah, when you become Medicare eligible, which would be the first of the month you turn 65, at this small company, you have to have your Medicare A and B because that becomes your primary insurance. And then it almost never makes sense to stay on the group plan because you're paying $1,000 a month for a secondary benefit, right? If you're covering a younger spouse, that's the exception, right? Because you want to keep the spouse covered on the group benefit. But generally speaking, those people are coming off of the group and getting Medicare and a supplement. So, yeah. All right? Okay. Um, if you miss this window and you don't have the group coverage, there's a penalty of for every 12 months you don't have your Medicare, it's a 10% it's a penalty on those Part B premiums. So if you miss it for two or three years, it's 20 or 30% penalty um, you know, on those premiums. And you pay the penalty the rest of your life. So it's a pretty big penalty. Oh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have, you guys all, you have group coverage, right? Yeah. But if someone doesn't have group coverage, uh -huh. if someone doesn't have group coverage and they don't enroll in Medicare, uh -huh. and you, let's say you just, for whatever reason, you roll the dice, I'm just not gonna have insurance for two years. And then you go to sign up for Medicare, there's a 20, that would be a two years, 20% penalty on your Part B premiums, and you'd pay that penalty the rest of your life. Wow. So that's the number one biggest mistake we see people make on Medicare. Oh my God. Why are they penalizing you? They didn't have to cover you. So there's, some, yeah, I mean, there's something in insurance called adverse selection, right? So you can't buy homeowner's insurance after your house burns down, right? So the theory is if people just wait until they get sick to buy insurance, it's no longer insurance, right? So that's the purpose of, Th that type of rule, okay? So, but um, anyway, so that's the initial enrollment period. Uh, we're gonna skip through this. We, we talked about this a little bit. Um, these are those me federal Medicare secondary payer rules that determines which insurance is gonna pay your claims <coughs> first. So for the small company, 10, 10 employees, um, that's the first row of this table. If someone's turning 65, Medicare is the primary payer. You have to have Medicare A and B. And then again, you can keep the group if you want as a secondary generally doesn't make sense. Um, if it's 20 or more employees, the group health plan will be primary. So that means you don't have to sign up for Medicare. You can stay on the group health plan as long as you continue to work and it has to keep paying your claims and, and so forth. Um, the third and fourth row of this table is for another way to qualify for Medicare, which is through disability. So if you're on social security disability for 24 months, you could be 35 years old and, and you could qualify for Medicare, right? If you qualify due to disability, these secondary payer rules are a little bit different. For a company less than 100 employees, Medicare is primary, and for a company 100 or more, uh, the group health plan is primary. 
So just a little nuance there if you're on Medicare due to disability versus, you know, turning 65. Now, if you're on a retiree health plan, let's say you're a teacher or you're married to a teacher that was taught for 25 years and you get this retiree health plan, um, you turn 65, you still have to sign up for Medicare A and B. It's, it's going to be uh, secondary. The retiree plan is secondary to, to Medicare. Right? And the last one of this table is we call it the COBRA trap. Um, it's a pretty big issue. We've been fighting this in Washington for years. Um, we have a new bill that's been drafted, again, with we do have uh, – bipartisan support on it, so hopefully we'll get that through. But basically, the issue with COBRA, when you're working at that large company with 20 or more employees and you're past age 65, the group health plan is primary. It continues to pay all your claims, no issues. Now you're 67 and you retire, and by federal law, the, the, the company has to send you this COBRA letter, right, which says you can keep the same health insurance, um, you're just going to pay the full premium. Um, but what they don't always tell you is Medicare becomes primary at that point. So if you don't sign up for Medicare and you take COBRA benefits, you're in the same situation where COBRA doesn't have to pay for 80% of your claims. All right, so it could be another big issue for, uh, for people. All right. So those are the, the secondary payer rules. Um, these are the, uh, the enrollment scenarios. So let's say you've decided now you're ready to sign up for Medicare. How do you sign up for Medicare? So um, there's kind of three different scenarios. The first one, if you're turning 65 and you're already enrolled in Social Security benefits, um, you're going to be automatically enrolled in Medicare A and B. So the government will just mail you your red, white, and blue Medicare card um, about three months before your, um, your 65th birthday, and it's going to have your Medicare uh, number and your A and B effective date. If you don't want the Part B, you can call them up and say, I don't want the Part B, and they'll send you a new card with just the Part A on it. So if you're still covered on the group plan, for whatever reason you're taking your Social Security, um, you can send back the card and they'll send you a new one with just the A on it. Um, if you're turning 65 and you're not enrolled in Social Security benefits yet and you want to enroll in Medicare, the easiest way is right on the Social Security website. So yes, it's on the Social Security website to enroll in Medicare. Right? It's a little confusing there, but that's where you enroll in the Part A and B of Medicare um, if you're turning 65. If you're enrolling after age 65, it's a different process. So you have to prove to the government that you were covered on a group health plan since you were 65, so you don't get those penalties or delays. So these are the forms that you need if you're enrolling after age 65. Um, the first one is uh, basically it's the enrollment in Medicare form that the individual fills out and signs, and you put in your remarks section of that form that I want a January 1st effective date or whatever date you want for your coverage. The second form, which is more important, is the employment information form, and that has to be filled out by the employer that's providing the health insurance that shows you've been covered on the group health plan since you were 65. Okay, this is the form that's important. This is the one that helps you avoid those penalties and delays in your Medicare coverage. All right? Any questions on this? It's disjointed because you, your retirement is now 66 or later, mm -hmm. but Medicare starts at 65. So the two haven't, you know, kept in, uh, in sync with each other, so they're out of sync, and it makes it important for you to have three different uh, scenarios. Yes. Yeah, and, and it would be a significant savings in the Medicare program if they align it. Which, yeah, exactly. But there's they different are, views on that, you know, from I mean, and different perspectives. By the month. Every, you know, you're 66 <coughs> in two months, you retire. Five months later. Yeah. Yeah. Month. I mean, it's it's very common. People are working past 65 now. So um, you're, you're you're right, though. There's there's definitely some disjointedness between Social Security and and Medicare. They don't like, they don't like each other. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> people that are, people that, I mean, you get bombarded with mail and phone calls and marketing and commercial, like, it's, uh, your mailbox gets, yes, you will get, absolutely get mail from the government, <laughs> from non-government entities trying to sell you something. Um, when you get close to that, that point, you do get bombarded with marketing and oh, messaging true. and notifications. Jimmy Walker. Perhaps it's too much. And Jimmy Walker and <laughs> William Shackman and, and <laughs> Joe Namath and all these guys. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. Keep going here. Okay. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pass to my my superstar colleague here, Mr. Rod Span, to talk about the differences between uh, Medicare supplements and uh, Medicare Advantage. Fantastic. Thank you.
But let's say you, you got your red, white, and blue card and you're signed up for Medicare. Now you really only have two choices, right, when it comes to where you want to go to get the rest of your Medicare coverage. So the chart clearly makes it uh, pretty simple. You got to go to the left or to the right. You can't do both, right? You cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan or a standalone prescription drug plan and a supplement, right? Those are two do separate things. Um, the Medicare Advantage route, as Justin uh, mentioned, uh, really is a bundled plan. Right? It replaces your Part A and B, hospital and uh, medical insurance, and oftentimes it includes Part D prescription drug coverage as well. But it's all in one plan uh, that's managed by one carrier, right? that private insurance company. The other route is the original Medicare route, where you get your, your red, white, and blue card. That still becomes your primary. Uh, you you know, pick your, your appropriate Part D prescription drug plan that covers your list of medications uh, specifically. And then, if you want additional coverage, you choose a Medicare supplement plan or a Medigap plan to cover um, you know, the, the holes that original Medicare does not. Um, one of the things that we, we hear a lot is folks using this terminology, Medicare supplement, synonymously with Medicare Advantage. And as we'll go into realize, they are, they could not be further, uh, they could not be more different, right? So uh, Medicare supplements are not Medicare Advantage plans and you cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medicare Supplement plan at the same time. You also can't have a Medicare Advantage plan and a standalone prescription drug plan. Um, the reason we clarify that is because there are some Medicare Advantage plans that do not include drug coverage. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes that's for veterans who have uh, VA benefits where they get all their prescriptions through the VA or they have like TRICARE and they get prescription drugs that way they can pick up a Medicare Advantage plan that's only for hospital and medical benefits. But those who pick up those particular plans can't, on top of that, get another standalone prescription drug plan. It does not work, all right? So those are the two paths. What are some of the similarities and some of the differences? All right, so the biggest thing is how they work with Part A and B and why that's actually important. Um, the first two actually kind of go hand in hand. So when you have original Medicare, Parts A and B, um, you're able to go to any hospital, any provider that participates with the federal health insurance program, Medicare. That's 99% of providers and over 90% of, or 99% of hospitals and over 90% of providers. So uh, it's not a private network, it's really the Medicare system, which is all over the United States, uh, all the states and their territories, right? You can, you can go there. With a Medicare Advantage plan, your Part A and B benefits are actually replaced. So even though you still have your red, white, and blue card, they actually tell you to put that away in a safe place because you're not gonna use it anymore. Now you have this fully privatized insurance policy that replaces your Part A and B benefits. Now your primary care physician is managing your care for you and you're on an HMO or a PPO-like plan where you have to go to the doctors in that network. Um, if you have a PPO, you have the option to go outside of the network at a higher cost share, but they also have to agree to the specific terms of that plan. So it's not just because you have a PPO, you can go wherever you want, right? There's still plenty of hospitals and providers out there that even if it is a PPO, don't participate with any Medicare Advantage plan. So those are two important things to, to keep in mind. Um, third, as far as referrals, right? Um, with a Medicare, original Medicare and a Medicare supplement, you do not need a referral to see a specialist. Um, if you need a test, if you um, want to go to the podiatrist or something, you go. Uh, original Medicare, you don't need a referral. Uh, it's very simple. Now, they have built that into a number of Medicare Advantage plans uh, today uh, where you don't need a referral to see certain specialists or to get certain tests done. So that's nice, uh, but oftentimes, more often than not, you are going to need a referral. Your primary care physician is that gatekeeper. They are the ones that's gonna tell you yes or no, or you can go here or you can't go here. If you had an x-ray six months ago, you don't need another one for another year and a half, right? So oftentimes that's, that's the difference we'll see between those two types of plans. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Part D, which is prescription drug coverage, help you to, to offset the cost of uh, medications that only continue to rise in cost. Um, Part D is generally built in uh, to a Medicare Advantage plan. Oftentimes we'll see that built into these plans, whereas uh, with original Medicare, you have to pick a standalone prescription drug plan with its own premium in order to get prescription drug coverage. It's not built into original Medicare, 
and it's not built into a Medicare supplement. It's a separate plan altogether. Now, here's what where a lot of folks actually really focus in on. This is, again, also what the commercials and the advertisements really tout. It's the premium, right? As if the premium is the only thing that matters in the world. Um, with Medicare Advantage plans, generally, you're going to see very low premiums. As Justin mentioned, zero dollars. Oftentimes, you're seeing these uh, zero dollar uh, Medicare Advantage plans. Um, whereas on the other end, a Medicare supplement is going to cost you a lot more than zero dollars. Maybe I'll have a lot more, but it's going to cost you more than zero dollars. And because of that, um, that's where, where people tend to lean more towards the Medicare Advantage plans because they're interested in not having to pay anything extra. But as we all know, uh, nothing in this world is free, right? So uh, if we continue down on this chart, because of you know the zero dollar premium um, of these Medicare Advantage plans, your, your annual out-of-pocket cost goes all the way up to the federal maximum. Uh, this year, that's $7,550. That's in network. If you go out of network, it goes all the way up to $10,000 or $11,000 for the majority of these plans, right? That's how much copay, coinsurance, and deductibles you'd be responsible for before that $0 plan covers you 100%, all right? Um, with a Medicare supplement, your out-of-pocket costs, which is, again, copays, coinsurance, and deductibles are minimal, right? We're going to go through briefly three of the most popular Medicare supplements, and the, the one that's, that's extremely popular now, your out-of-pocket is only... $233, right? It's your Part B deductible uh, this year, and then next year it's going down to $226, right? Um, so that's your out-of-pocket cost for Medicare supplements. So you can kind of see hand-in-hand, hand, right? The premium may be a little bit higher with a supplement, but the variable costs are much lower. Whereas with the Medicare Advantage plan, you get a $0 premium, but you have a lot more hoops to, to, to work through and also more variable costs to keep in mind, all right? And then lastly, guaranteed mm -hmm. renewable for like, okay. oh, question, I'm so sorry. That's okay, I can wait. Uh, That's okay. Can you switch back and forth? Can you, while you're younger and healthier, pick the Medicare Advantage and then switch back to original Medicare at some point? Great question. We'll answer that actually okay. uh, briefly, right, in the next one. Because um, that is a question we get a lot, right? Can you go from Medicare Advantage to a Medicare supplement? Um, the simple answer is perhaps, maybe, but Great. we'll get into why, okay? <laughs> Um, lastly, this is important, guaranteed renewable for life. Do you know what guaranteed renewable for life means? It sounds good, right? It means it's guaranteed for life. So with a Medicare supplement, if you, as long as you stay alive, uh, stay enrolled in your Medicare supplement and continue to pay your monthly premium, no one can ever take your Medicare supplement away from you. It's guaranteed renewable for life, right? With a Medicare Advantage plan, that is not the case, right? Mm -hmm. These plans, they change every single year. Doctors not go in. Ted Cruz? No, <laughs> no comment. Um, so with these <laughs> Medicare Advantage plans, uh, they, they change every year, right? Doctors come in and out of network. Uh, this year, we saw uh, an entire uh, plan just disappear, right? They're leaving the Medicare Advantage field altogether, right? So th there's not this stability that's found with a Medicare supplement. Now, we say all that to say, some people are going to lean towards a supplement, others are going to lean towards Advantage, and that is your personal choice. But it's extremely important to at least understand the, the major differences, because if you don't, right, if you make a decision based on just premium, you might find yourself in a situation where you can't go to Sloan Kettering or Johns Hopkins or hospital special surgeries that they don't participate with any Medicare Advantage plan, only original Medicare. So understanding this will help you make an informed decision. So. We'll talk briefly about three of the most popular uh, Medicare supplements. Um, perhaps you've heard of these before, Plan F, Plan G, and Plan N. I see some nodding heads, all right. Um, one thing we'll highlight before we get into this is um, all of these Medicare supplements are federally regulated and standardized. So what that means is that the government sets the terms of how these plans have to operate. No matter who the carrier is, United Healthcare, Aetna, Mutual of Omaha, Cigna, um, Humana, if it's a plan F, this is how it looks. If it's a plan G, it'll look like the other one. There is no difference in these plans. The only difference is premium, monthly premium. That's it, all right? So how plan F operates with part A, which is your hospital insurance. Um, Justin touched on it earlier. The, you know, If you go into the hospital, um, Medicare will pay everything except the first $1,600. That's referred to as the part A deductible. If you only had original Medicare, Part A and B, you'd be responsible for that first $1,600. All 
The same kind of range true if you go into a skilled nursing facility. Obviously, <laughs> Medi Medicare covers the first 20 days, 100%, but days 21 through 100, if you only had original Medicare, you'd be responsible for $200 per day. Now, these are 2023's numbers, because um, we're almost there already, all right? But it's pretty similar here in 2022. Plan F, Medicare supplement, covers the deductible, the co-pays if you're in the hospital for more than 60 days, as well as days 21 through 100 if you're in a skilled nursing facility. So really, we'll just focus here on this far right. With Plan F, how much do you pay for anything? Zero, Zero right? And that's why Plan F used to be the gold standard when it came to Medicare supplements. Um, you pay your monthly premium and you have no out-of-pocket costs whatsoever, right? Um, the same range true when it comes to Part B, which is again, everything outside <coughs> of the hospital. Uh, generally, that first $226, which is the Part B deductible, if you only had original Medicare, you'd be responsible for that. And then after the fact, Medicare would pay 80%, you'd be responsible for 20% of an unlimited amount. With the Medicare Supplement Plan F, that, that deductible is covered as well as that 20%. So as you see here again, with Plan F, you are responsible for zero dollars. Now. The thing about Plan F is you can't actually get Plan F unless you qualified for Medicare before January 1st, 2020. <laughs> now that does not mean you had to be enrolled in Medicare, but you had to qualify for Medicare. Basically your date of birth needed to be before 1955. So 1954 and earlier, um, you could still qualify for a Plan F Medicare supplement. Bait um, and switch. What was that? Bait and switch. Yeah, bait. Well, the reality is Plan G right now is exactly like Plan F, and this is really the gold standard when it comes to Medicare supplements now, because Plan G operates exactly like Plan F, except you as the beneficiary are responsible for the first $226, which is the Part B deductible. After that, it operates exactly like a Plan F Medicare supplement. The Medicare pays 80%, the supplement pays the other 20, and you're responsible for nothing. So Plan G, gold standard, fantastic plan. Um, the third most popular plan is a little more cost effective because as we'll get into, you have a little bit more out of pocket cost. It's plan N, uh, as in Nancy. Uh, plan N, you still are responsible for that $226 deductible. But on top of that, you also have what's uh, referred to as the uh, office co-payments. So it's up to $20 for every office visit and up to $50 for an emergency room visit. And it's worded very specifically because you're not gonna get charged 20 bucks every time you go to the office every time you go to see your specialist or, or primary, um, the maximum though that they're able to charge you is 20. Sometimes it won't charge you a thing. Sometimes it'll be $5, $10, 15, 18, 25, doesn't matter. The max they can charge you is 20 bucks. And the same range true for emergency room visits. Um, but it is waived if you're admitted into the hospital. So you don't have to worry about it if you gotta stay overnight, all right? And then lastly, um, Part B excess charges. These are covered under Plan F and Plan G. But with Plan N, um, excess charges are, are basically 15% more than the Medicare approved amount. So Medicare has the approved amount for every service imaginable. And if a, a provider wants to work with Medicare, they generally agree to accept Medicare's payment, to accept assignment. Um, but a provider once a year is able to say, hey, I wanna work with Medicare, but I wanna charge a little bit more. It's about 15, it's up to 15% more than that Medicare approved amount and if you had plan N, you'd be responsible for that cost, right? So it would not be covered, you would be responsible for it. So plan F generally in relation to all these other supplements is generally gonna be lower in premium because you have more variable costs that you as the beneficiary are responsible for. Now, we had a question earlier about, you know, switching back and forth between a Medicare Advantage and a Medicare supplement. And this will kind of help answer that question. Um, these are the enrollment periods when uh, most people will get onto a Medicare supplement. Um, the six month open enrollment period that is tied to your Part B effective date. So even if you're, if you're turning 65, your Part B effective date is the first of the month you turn 65. Or if you're signing up later when you turn 70, doesn't matter, your Part B is gonna be a specific date. You have six months from that Part B effective date to enroll in any Medicare supplement, no questions asked. They're not, going to look, they're not going to ask you any health questions. They're not looking at any pre-existing conditions. You are guaranteed to get into a Medicare supplement. 
The same is true if, you know, because of disability, you were on Medicare before 65, but now you're approaching your 65th birthday. You have another open enrollment window to get onto a Medicare supplement, no questions asked. And in this case, right, if you're on Social Security disability, that more than likely is going to be your last opportunity to get onto a supplement because after those six months, after the six months from your Part B, and if you're on disability six months after your 65th, if you want to go on to a Medicare supplement, you have to go through medical underwriting. So that's where they're gonna ask you a series of questions about your health, right? And they're looking for serious things, heart attack, stroke, cancer, COPD, diabetes with insulin. And at that time, right, if, if the questions don't add up, then they have the ability to, to deny you access to a Medicare supplement. So in the situation where a person's like, hey, I'm healthy now, I'm gonna sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan and just roll the dice. What we often see is, right, they go with the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, unfortunately, they get sick and they realize that the Advantage plan has a lot of issues that they don't want to have to deal with. They want to go to Sloan Kettering, right, to get the treatment. So they call us up and they say, hey, I want to go on a Medicare supplement. We ask them these questions. They can't answer in the affirmative, and now they can't get a Medicare supplement. So you're stuck with your Medicare Advantage plan. So you could, in theory, go back and forth if you wanted to, but depending on your health, you may not be able to. So that's why we refer to making this Medicare choice. Uh, it's like it's a lifetime decision, and you should really, really think about not just what's happening today, but you know, think about the future, which is really what insurance is for when things go bad, not when they're going great. Yes, Mark. So, <clears throat> let's say you picked uh, a Medicare Advantage plan, and five years from now, that insurance company is now getting out of the Medicare Advantage business. Mm -hmm. Can are you? How does that? If, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan and that Advantage plan is going out of business, you are guaranteed accepted into another Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. You can get... You get guaranteed as yourself. You can get guaranteed if they go out of business? If you get canceled on the Advantage plan, it's also guaranteed as yourself and you have to get separate. Oh, yeah. Oh. So there you go. If you get, yeah, if, you, if they but cancel still, it... But, but, you know, that, that, that that's doesn't, unusual. Doesn't, that's unusual, right? It doesn't, yeah. I mean... But you're not stuck. That's, that's an out. Yeah, yeah. Now you can go into another Advantage plan, or that's a guaranteed issue where there's no medical questions for a supplement, but that's, right. you know, that's an exceptional scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if you move out of, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, and you happen to move out of state or out of your service area, that's another opportunity to get into a Medicare supplement, no questions asked. It's called a guaranteed issue situation. Yeah. There's actually a whole list of those, maybe about six, six or so that will get you in outside of this um, outside of this open enrollment period. They're extenuating circumstances, um, but it's available on the, the Medicare.gov uh, website. Yeah, all right. And now we'll give this back to Justin to bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ron. Um, so we've covered a lot already, right? The different parts of Medicare, the differences between supplements and Advantage plans, how much you pay the government for the premium for Part B. Um, the next part of the presentation is the prescription drug coverage, also called Part D of Medicare. And we've mentioned there's about 25 different Part D plans available in each state, um, and that tool that we use to pick the drug plan. But I just want to give you some framework for how these um, these Part D, this is the confusing part, by the way, if you're not confused. Um, <laughs> So with Medicare, these drug plans, they all there's 25 or so, but they all have to follow the same framework. All right, this this slide here is the framework. There's four steps, if you will, within Part D of Medicare. All right, the first step is the initial coverage level. I'm sorry, is the deductible, um, which next year can go up to uh, $505. So the the plans could have a zero deductible, it could have a $200 deductible, but it can't be any higher than $505. Okay, for that prescription plan. Most of these plans, if, even if they have a deductible, the deductible is really for those higher tier drugs. So if you're just on low cost, um, you know, generic blood pressure, cholesterol meds, even if your plan has that $505 deductible, you're still gonna have like a zero copay or dollar copay, you know, because that deductible only applies to those higher tier drugs, all right? Now, if you have a higher tier drug, like a brand name drug, you're gonna pay the deductible before you get to a copay, all right? That's like any other deductible. All right, after the deductible comes the initial coverage level. And this is gonna feel similar to group insurance or individual pre-65, where you're gonna pay a copay or coinsurance for your medication, you know, $5 a month, 10, 40, you know, depending on the, the, the tier of the medication. 
right? 85% of Medicare beneficiaries are not going to get past this second level, all right? As long as your drug costs total for the year less than 4660 retail, retail costs, which I'll get into, then you're just going to pay that copay the whole year, and it's going to feel kind of similar to regular insurance, right? Where it gets really confusing and expensive is if you have expensive medications that exceed that initial coverage level, you fall into this step three, which is called the coverage gap or the donut hole. There you go, the donut hole. They used to you know, call that the donut hole with, with Part D because you pay more for your drug. You used to have to pay 100% of your drug costs. While you're in the donut hole, about 10, 12 years ago, you, it dropped to 50%, and then it slowly came down and down, and now it's 25% is what you'd have to pay while you're in the donut hole or the coverage gap. Okay, I'm going to give you an example to try and simplify this because I know it's complicated. Um, but let's just say, and this is based on the total cost of your drugs, but if you're just taking one medication for simplicity and it's an expensive medication, right? Anything you see a commercial for is going to hit you here, right? Um, but let's take a common heart medication, uh, Xarelto, Eliquis Xarelto. They're like 600 bucks a month retail, okay? People don't realize that, right? You're paying 40 bucks a month copay or whatever it is. Um, but the retail cost of that drug is about $600 a month. So, you, you know, let's say you have a Part D drug plan in January, and assume you don't have a deductible for simplicity, um, but you go to pick up the Xarelto, it's $45. February, 45. March, 45. April, May, June. Now you get to September, and you go to pick up the same medication, the pharmacist says that'll be $150. And you say, I'm sorry, that's got to be incorrect, right? Rerun that, it's $45. That's my copay. What happens in September, you're nine months into the year, Nine months times $600, $600 right, or even eight months, right? You, you just, you've just surpassed that initial coverage level, and now you have to pay 25% of that $600 drug cost, which is $150. So instead of paying that $45 that you've been paying, now you're in the coverage gap. Okay, that's a one drug example, but it's based on the total cost of your drugs. If you exceed that amount, you have to pay that 25% while you're in the coverage gap. All right? <clears throat> And again, it's, it's, it's only about 15% of beneficiaries that, that get to this point. Um, most people are, aren't on that, that expensive of meds, right? Was there a question? No. no. Um, and then there's protection on the other side of the donut hole called catastrophic coverage. And this is so if you have very expensive medications, you're not stuck paying that 25% for the entire back half of the year. Um, Humira, for example, is like a $6,000 a month drug. Right, so people that have to take Humira, you would hit that donut hole in like the first month, and now you're paying 25% the rest of the year if you didn't have protection on the other side. You'd be paying $1,500 a month for the rest of the year. So catastrophic is there to protect you, so now you drop down to 5% if you reach the catastrophic level. This is only about 4% of the Medicare beneficiaries that get all the way to step four. Okay? I don't want to confuse you with the definition of how you, because how you get into the catastrophic is a different definition than the donut hole. But here's what I'll tell you. If you have those very expensive medications, you're going to spend about $1,500 of your money to get into the coverage gap and about $1,500 of your money to get to the catastrophic. So that person who has a Humira, they're not really spending $7,400 to get to that 5%. Okay? Um, and this is all going away, by the way, in a couple of years, so uh, it's going to get better. Um, but that's the framework. All, all of those drug plans out there have to follow those, those rules. Um, let me go back, actually. So, um, there was a bill passed in August. Um, the name is a little ironic, but um, the, uh, there was a lot of Medicare uh, prescription drug pricing changes in that bill from a month ago, all right? And this, this slide highlights some of those changes, all right? The first change is um, there's a $35 a month cap on insulin. So this actually is already in place today with Medicare, but it wasn't legislate, done through legislation. It was an executive order um, about five years ago called the Senior Savings Model. And essentially what it said is if there's uh, insulin drugs that are covered on some of these Part D drug plans, they can't charge more than $35 a month. Now it's legislation. So now that's just kind of extended. Any, any plan that covers these insulins, they can charge no more than $35 a month. So that's good for diabetics. Um, the second one, vaccine cost sharing. So most vaccines on Medicare are covered under Part D as in boy. Um, your flu vaccine, your COVID vaccine, so those are zero cost share already. But the, uh, the one that's covered under Part D as in drugs, uh, shingles, is people don't realize. So they're paying, it's generally a higher tier uh, drug, so they're paying towards the deductible. It's like $150 a shot, basically. So starting next year, 
um, it's going to be zero cost sharing for even the Part D vaccine. All right. Um, premium stabilization on the drug plan starting in 2024. So that's not next year, the year after, though. Um, it's going to be a 6% maximum increase per year. So right now, we've had plans that just announced the rates for next year. We've got some that have doubled in price, um, you know, 30, 40, 50% increases on these premiums for the drug plans. Starting in 2024, they can't increase more than 6%. Uh, the other changes, so those benefit levels I just went through are going to change starting in 2024 and starting in 2025, you're going to have a maximum out of pocket, like your group insurance or your individual insurance, right? Right now in Medicare, there's no maximum out of pocket for drugs, right? You have unlimited exposure, essentially. You can keep paying that 5%, right, in the catastrophic forever. This is going to cap in 24 and 25, your out of pocket exposure. And then in 26, the drug price negotiation actually starts earlier than that, but the pricing resulting from that will take effect starting in 2026. All right. So let's quickly jump back to that uh, 2020. So we're going to look at the same framework. I'm just just for one minute here. This is 2024 now that just came out of that legislation. Legislation. Um, we don't have any of the numbers for the deductible or any of this stuff. So the framework remains the same, but the change is here. Right. In 2023, you still pay the five percent in catastrophic. In 2024, zero, right? So you're kind of, there's a cap now, right? Your, your exposure is limited to when you hit that fourth phase, and then you go to zero, all right? And then 2025, it changes dramatically. This step three and four essentially goes away, right? So now you, you still have a deductible and a copay for your drugs. Once you reach that 2,000 out of pocket, you're done. So you don't pay anything after that, okay? So it makes it a lot easier to explain. Uh, <laughs> going forward. So, and, and if you have expensive drugs, it certainly saves you, saves you money. So, all right. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail. This is from the Kaiser Family Foundation, but they, they kind of took the bill and broke it out by year to kind of show you what's happening. Um, the negotiation I mentioned, the, the implementation of the negotiated prices will start in 2026, starting with the 10 most expensive Part D drugs based upon how much Medicare pays at volume, right? So not per drug, but at volume, right? What are the 10 most expensive that they're, they're trying to save money on? So that's going to start in 2026, and then it increases 15, 27, and then they start adding in Part B drugs and Part D drugs in future years. So um, these, these are the top 10 most expensive Part D drugs, so you get an idea of what are those ones they, they're probably going after. Um, and we see these all the time. Eliquis, I mentioned, Xarelto, Genuvia, Trulicity, Humira, I mentioned. Victosa, um, very expensive drugs. These are obviously no generic alternatives. Um, so people that have these, they're paying a lot of money for them. Um, these are the most expensive Part B drugs. Those are going to be like infusion uh, treatments, chemotherapy type drugs, uh, things that are administered in a doctor's office or under Part B as in boy. All right. Um, this is where we normally do a demo. We're not doing it tonight, but we'll send you the summary. You'll have a demo of how you pick how we pick the most cost-effective drug plan. It's right on the Medicare website. It's available to anybody. It's the same tool we use for all of our clients when they first go on Medicare. And then every year you get an opportunity between October 15th and December 7th to review the drug plan for the following year to make sure you have the most cost-effective drug plan. Even if your drugs don't change, those plans change every year. So you want to take advantage of that time to review the, the drug plan. Um, and this is the tool that, that we use. And again, it's a public, it's right on the Medicare website. And we'll send out the, the video on how to do that. Um, there's some other prescription assistance programs out there. Um, these are not Part D of Medicare, right? You, it, even if you're not taking any drugs, you still have to have a Part D drug plan um, for two reasons. Number one, the government will charge a penalty if you don't have a Part D drug plan. It's a 1% penalty for every month you don't have a Part D drug plan. So, you know, I'm going to wait three years, and then I decide oh, now I need a drug plan. It's a 36% penalty on your Part D premiums, you have to pay the rest of your life, that penalty. Wow. All right? So, the, again, the lowest premium drug plans are like $7 a month, right? So just to have, even if you're not taking any meds, just have some cover. And, it's, and actually, every Part D plan has to cover at least two <coughs> drugs in every therapeutic category. So even that plan that's $7 a month is very likely going to cover any drug you get prescribed that year. Um, and so it gives you some coverage, and it avoids the penalty. But these are coupons, right? These are not Part D, right? You still have to have the Part D. But some of these coupons, you actually find a lower copay than your Part D drug plan, depending on the medication, all right? Um, Zetia is one that we're seeing a lot, of the generic Zetias. is coming up cheaper on GoodRx than some of these drug plans. Um, 
uh, some of the inhalers and prescription creams and lotions, um, they come up cheaper on some of these websites rather than the drug plan. So you kind of use them together depending on the medication. And then there's a prescription assistance uh, in each state based upon income. Uh, New Jersey, it's called PAD and Senior Gold. It's prescription assistance for the aged and disabled. Um, it's income based, so it's uh, it's about for single income about forty thousand. If you're below that amount, you qualify for PAD. Uh, married, it's like forty six or forty seven thousand. And then Senior Gold is a level right above that. If you qualify for PAD, um, they pay your premium for the drug plan, and the most you'll pay is five dollars for generic or eight dollars for a brand name drug. So it's a very you know good program if you have expensive drugs and you're in a lower income bracket. Um, and then Senior Gold is not as generous, but it's you still get some discount on your medications. So, okay. Now the top five mistakes, we'll just quickly recap here. These were kind of touched on throughout the presentation. Um, the first biggest mistake we see people make is not enrolling in Part B on time. All right, so we went through that, kind of have that seven month window um, to enroll. If you don't have other, drug, um, other group employer coverage, um, you know, that's the time to enroll. And we went through, if you don't enroll and you don't have other coverage, that 10% penalty. Uh, we talked a little bit about that covert trap. So if you're if you're working past the age of 65 and then you retire, you really have to sign up for Medicare right at that point. Even if you're taking COBRA, it's going to be secondary to Medicare. Um, so this is the kind of the number one biggest mistake we see. Oh, the other side of this coin, by the way, is enrolling too soon in Part B. We have people that work at large companies that make a lot of money, and they call us at age 70 and they say, "I'm ready to sign up." And we find out they've had their Part B for five years and they've been covered on their group health insurance because they thought they were they had to have it, and they're paying $600 a month to the government for essentially nothing, right, for five years, right? So that's the kind of the flip side of this, right? You can be enrolling too soon in the Part B or, uh, or too late, so. <clears throat> the second biggest mistake people make is not analyzing their prescription drug costs. Um, it could very well be a difference of thousands of dollars between the, the, the right Part D drug plan and then the one at the bottom of that list of those 25 different plans. And it's all very specific to your medication. So there isn't like, well, this is like, a, this is the plan that's good for everyone, right? And this is the plan that's bad for everyone. It's very specific to your medication to make sure you have the right drug plan. If you have inexpensive meds, it's not gonna be a significant difference in the cost. But if you have expensive medications, it could very well be thousands of dollars a year difference between the best and the worst drug plan. Um, and this is when you first go on Medicare, but then also every year, again, that window is now. So if you have a drug plan, you should be looking at this, to, or if you're on Medicare now, you should be looking at this for the following year to make sure you have the right drug plan. Eliquis is a very expensive drug that a lot of carriers moved from tier three to tier four this year. So people could be happy with their drug plan right now and they're paying $40 copay, and next year they go to pick it up and it's $200 or 150, right? It's in a, it's in a different category, right? And it's the same drug plan, but they change. So um, the third biggest mistake people make on Medicare is not understanding the difference between the Medicare Advantage path and the original Medicare. All right, Rod did a great job explaining these, these differences. Um, they're very different types of coverage. Um, the Advantage plan, again, is that fully privatized plan. It's managed care, right? It means the insurance company is making the decisions for you, whether or not you can go to certain providers or not, right? If they're gonna approve an x-ray or a test or a medication, right? it's, it's much more regulated uh, from a, a carrier perspective, insurance company perspective. With, with original Medicare and a Medicare supplement, if something's medically necessary, Medicare generally approves it. And the supplement has zero say in approvals. They, they have to pay, it's, it's regulated, they have to pay the second portion of, their, uh, of that claim. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the third biggest mistake we see. Oh, the, let me ask a question, you know, we mentioned the zero premium on the Advantage plans. Anyone under, know how that works? Like how do they get away with giving, are they giving free insurance? Any ideas? So what happens is um, the, the government pays the insurance. When you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, the government pays the insurance company. It's about $1,000 a month, right? Because you're no longer on Medicare. When you sign up for the Advantage plan, you're, you're now fully administered by United or Aetna or whomever you sign up for, right? So the government's washing their hands, no more claims, administration, or whatever. And now they're paying the insurance company to take you off the books, basically. So that's how that works. Um, the fourth biggest mistake we see people make is not analyzing retiree health plans. So um, in a lot of cases, a retiree health plan might be a great benefit, right? If you're a teacher for 25 years, you get a zero premium health insurance plan, right? But if you're a teacher for 20 years, that same plan is $400 plus a month, right? Where you could go out on your own and get 
um, you know, an individual supplement and drug plan for half the price and get better coverage, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is, you know, and not to say every retiree, again, if you have 25 years and it's zero premium, it's probably the right move, right? But a lot of people think, you know, it's a retiree benefit. Even if I'm paying $400 a month, it's a benefit, so I should take it, right? So it's not always the case. And then the fifth biggest mistake we see people make is listening to your friends and family. <laughs> we joke about that, but we see it all the time. Um, you know, Medicare is really an individual uh, health insurance. Everything's going to be specific to your situation, especially with something like the drug plans. Um, you know, people will call us up and say, I want, you know, this drug card because this is what my spouse has or my neighbor has or whatever. And we say, are you taking the same medication? No. Well, then it might not be the right plan for you, right? It's all very specific to your your situation. So, um, and that is the presentation. Um, again, we go through a lot of information there, so we, we go kind of quickly. Um, we wanted to get it all in, but we appreciate everyone coming out and hope you found it helpful. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're basically brokers. There's no fee to work with us. Um, people call us with just general questions. That's fine. I mean, we're happy to answer questions if people have a certain situation um, that they want to get clarification on. Um, if someone's working past the age of 65 and they want to know, do I need to sign up for Medicare? What do I need to do? Or you want to do a comparison between your group insurance and Medicare, you know, we're happy to do all that stuff. And then obviously when it's time to enroll, we'd love to be the person that you call and help you enroll uh, in, your, in your Medicare plan. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was terrific. Um, SeniorAdvisors.com, you can find them. Um, you can also call us and we'll give you their number. Uh, I thought it was very, uh, very helpful, very informative. Thank you very much.